Welcome to Hofstra Today. A sit down with the cast of Macbeth. A feature on our leading men and women's soccer teams. And Hofstra Today gets Halloweeny. All that and more at and around Hofstra Today. Welcome to Hofstra Today. I'm Max Sacco. And I'm Caitlin Bancroft. Well, Caitlin, it's the best time of the year. We even got costumes to celebrate. It's Halloween time. Yes, it sure is. So, so exciting. So, Caitlin, for you, obviously the huge part of Halloween is the candy. Oh, so yes. what would you say are your one? I'll even give you two because I know Halloween, there's a lot of options to pick from. So many. Favorite candies. Kit Kats, all-time classic. Now, Reese's Cups. Really? Reese's Cups? Mm-hmm. I'm a big Nestle Crunch fan myself. Really? Yes. Didn't take you for one. That's what a lot of people say. Even my mom said that. But big Nestle Crunch fan, I'd love to talk more candy with you, but it's time to get to the news. Of course. After a year of being closed to the public due to the pandemic, the Hofstra University Museum of Art has finally reopened and launched a new membership program. These memberships contribute to the level of programming, conservation, research, and exhibitions the museum has to offer. There are five different levels you can choose from, as well as other donation options. The first 15 people to renew, join, or donate in the month of October will be entered in a raffle to win a warm Hofstra University Museum of Art zip-up fleece. For more information on becoming a member, check out hofstra.edu slash museum. In the, 14th, in the 14th century, a pandemic known as the Black Death took the lives of over 40% of Asia and Europe's entire populations. Next week, Hofstra Professor of History Simon Doubleday will discuss how the devastating period affected the culture and politics of those same populations and how they recovered. The event will take place on Wednesday, November 3rd from 1 to 2.15 p.m. in the Guthart Culture Center. Advanced registration is required for all guests and may be completed on the Hofstra events calendar. The Zucker School of Medicine is welcoming Dr. David Battinelli as the new dean starting in fall 2022. Battinelli will succeed Dean Lawrence Smith for his central role at the school as Executive Vice President and Physician-in-Chief. President Susan Poser and the rest of the Zucker School say Battinelli will continue the tradition of education and clinical excellence for years to come. On Wednesday, November 3rd, Maija Cherry will be offering a lecture in which she will discuss Race Renegades, a message to allies from her new book, The Case for Rage, Why Anger is Essential to Anti-Racist Struggle. Cherry is an assistant professor of philosophy at the University of California, Riverside. The event will run from 4.20 to 6 p.m. at the Guthard Cultural Center Theater in the Axon Library on South Campus. Cherry's lecture will be open to the public, but requires advanced registration to attend. Are you interested in sports media and its impact on culture and society? Hofstra is hosting an event for you. Professor Vaccaro, whose work has been featured on ESPN, The New York Times, and Rolling Stone, is hosting this exciting event. It features a panel of experts in sports media, including Hofstra alumni Martin Vanderberg, George Vexy, and Wayne Randazzo, who you might know if you listen to the play-by-play -play for any of the Mets games. The event will be taking place virtually at 7 p.m., and anyone who is interested must RSVP to attend. Hofstra alumnus Ray Zaccaro will be on campus on Tuesday, November 9th to discuss the inner workings of the legislative process with a particular focus on how congressional staff inform policymaking. Zaccaro is the communications director for U.S. Senator Jeff Merkley. The lecture is a part of the Lives in Public Policy and Public Service lecture series presented by the Peter S. Calico School of Government public policy and international affairs. Each year speakers are invited to share their experience with the aim of engaging students with an interest in pursuing public service and public policy. The lecture will be in the Guthart Cultural Center Theater on the first floor of the Axon Library from 940 to 1105 a.m. The event is free and open to the public, but advanced registration is required. The American Ensemble concert is taking place on Sunday, November 7th at 3 p.m. and the ACE will be performing Diversity Through Music Part 1. 
The concert will feature a variety of composers and violinists, and it will take place in the Helene Fortunoff Theater with ticket sales in the Hofstra University box office. The tickets are $20 for general admission. Senior citizens and college students with ID will pay $15. The 73rd annual Hofstra Shakespeare Festival starts next week with the show This Bud of Love, a one-hour adaptation of Romeo and Juliet. The show will run from November 3rd through the 5th at 8 p.m. in the Joan and Donald Schaefer Black Box Theater. On Saturday, November 6th, there will be a special performance at 2 p.m. with the Hofstra Collegiate Musicum in the John Cranford Adams Playhouse. The shows are only open to Hofstra students with a valid Pride Pass. Don't go anywhere. Your weather forecast is after the break. Jason, let's go see your room. Oh, yeah. <laughs> How is it? your life. Now let's go to Ariadne Morales with the weather update. Thanks Max and Caitlin. Now let's look at this week's weather forecast. We can expect it to be cloudy today with a high of 58 degrees and a low of 48 degrees. Wind speeds will reach a high of 30 miles per hour with gusts that could top 40 miles per hour. Thursday will bring partly cloudy weather with a high of 59 degrees and a low of 48 degrees. Now let's take a look at how the rest of the week will take shape here in Hempstead. Friday will bring mostly clouds with a 60% chance of rain. There will be a high of 58 degrees and a low of 55 degrees. Wind speeds will reach a high of 25 miles per hour. Into the weekend we will see clouds with a 70% chance of showers on Saturday with a high of 64 degrees and a low of 54 degrees. On Sunday you may be able to trick or treat without your rain jacket because you can expect the sky to be partly cloudy and become much more clear at night. Winds will be topping 12 miles per hour with a high of 63 degrees and a low of 50 degrees. That's all for the five, de five weather forecast. I'm Ariadne Morales. Back to you Max and Caitlin. Thank you again, Ariadne. This past weekend, me and my fellow co-anchor Gabe James joined in on the fall festivities by going to the F&W Schmitz Farm in Melville. Let's take a look. Hi, I'm Gabe James. And I'm Max Sacco. And we're here today at Schmitz Farm Stand just to talk about what Hofstra students can do nearby that's fun, fall, and festive. Let's go take a look. Can I pick one? Also, I don't why think is it hairy? Why are they hairy? I think it's just like to keep them warm during the winter. <laughs> this is Chris with a K. This is JJ. I love JJ. He's very small and cute. My favorite pie flavor is also apple. Okay, and great. we are planning on getting an apple pie today. Amazing. Can't Good leave without taste. One. Good taste. I'm so glad. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going over here. I'm not going over. I'm too tall for over here. and I did not want to buy them at the grocery store. I wanted to harass my boyfriend and make him carry 100 pounds of pumpkins. I never thought I'd be back around the tractor. <laughs> I thought I was kind of done with that lifestyle choice. Hey, you can escape the country, but the country can't escape you. No, honestly. <laughs> no Max or Gabe. This is so much harder than I thought it was going to be. Yeah, I really thought this was going to be, I throw it in and hit. <laughs> And then twist, twist, twist. 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 Bang. Bang. <laughs> <laughs> Reporting for Hofstra today, I'm Max Sacco. And I'm Gabe James. Have a great fall, Hofstra. Now, for all the latest in things entertainment, here's Max Coven. Thanks, Caitlin. 
Hofstra will be hosting their annual Spooky Walk tomorrow, October 28th at Hofstra Hall. The festivities include pumpkin picking, trick-or-treating, and free snacks. Get your spook on at 4.30 p.m. outside of Hofstra Hall tomorrow. For more information, contact the Office of University Relations. Join Hofstra's annual celebration of autumn with the Oktoberfest. Head over to Monroe Theater tomorrow and Saturday, October 30th at 7.30 p.m. to hear student and faculty solo performances, as well as a melody from the Hofstra Tuba Euphonium Ensemble. Symposium is free, but advanced registration is required. And finally, the show that everyone is waiting for, Hofstra's 73rd Annual Shakespeare Festival. This year, the Hofstra Department of Drama and Dance is putting on their rendition of Macbeth. Performances will be held on the Hofstra Globe stage on October 29th and 30th at 8 p.m. and the 31st at 2 p.m. Anyone in the Hofstra community is welcome to attend with their Pride Pass. Wow, thanks Max. That sounds like a really exciting performance to bring the Shakespeare Festival and live theater back to Hofstra. And Max, I have to ask, I know you dabble a little bit in the drama world. It's got to be exciting a bit just to see, you know, people come back, you have full audiences again, and shows back on theaters, not over Zoom. Yeah, you know, the pandemic has been really rough on a lot of people, especially people who are studying theaters and arts, and it's very important to get them back in the center stage. So I'm so excited to sit down with the Macbeth cast really soon and talk to them about getting back to it. And I'm excited to see that show as well. Don't go anywhere. Stay tuned for an interview with the cast members of Macbeth. Wow, these are really good. You act surprised. Practice makes perfect. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection. They need you. You know what, guys? There's a lot of tree branches and dry brush over here. We should probably move the bonfire over there. I'm guessing Smokey liked that idea. Welcome back to Hofstra Today. I'm joined by Mackenzie Krustel and Harrison Campbell, the stars of this year's production of Macbeth. Thank you both so much for being here today. It is an honor to have you with us. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much, much for, for having, having us. us. Yeah. And so let's just get started. What is Macbeth about? So Macbeth is a Shakespearean tragedy. It's often referred to as the Scottish play because the entire play takes place in Scotland. It's about a Scottish general named Macbeth who's coming back from war and he hears a prophecy given to him by a, a coven of witches that uh, tell him he's going to become the king of Scotland and uh, lay out this really long prophecy and his best friend Banquo is going to become king after him. And it's all supposed to be good things, good tidings, and it ends up turning out a little less than expected. A lot of blood gets shed, and by the end, it's just a big reflection on all the, the misdeeds Macbeth has done. So, you know, we are coming off this pandemic and hopefully soon we can call a new normal and you guys especially have been away from the stage. What's it like returning to rehearsal? Give me a little bit of a day in the life. It's been pretty exceptional, I would say. Um, it was very exciting. Last night at Tech was our first opportunity to rehearse without masks. I'm in mean, the whole process. The whole cast was tested to make sure that we would all be safe. Um, it's been it's just been wonderful to be back in the theater with all of the different design elements and being with each other in person and being able to build those emotional connections in person. I'm so excited for people to see it. And, you know, I'm so excited to see it. So I have to ask the question, you know, we all read Shakespeare at some point in our lives, whether that's high school or here at Hofstra. Do you have to be a Shakespeare fanatic to understand the play from top to bottom? I think, honestly, the play really speaks for itself. If you're not a huge fan of Shakespeare, you're not coming to see the show for Shakespeare. You're coming to see the show because it's a really awesome, well-put-together production. And if you're coming for Shakespeare, well, that's what we're doing. So there's, there's something for everyone, definitely. And that's so exciting that there is something for everyone. Um, you know, being a part of the Hofstra Pride, you have to be vaccinated. We have our Pride passes to, to go to classes, resident or commuter. So tell me a little bit about that. What guests are allowed to come to your show? Are Pride passes required? Vaccination status? Mask? Give me a little bit of all that. 
So um, any member of the Hofstra community will be able to come. All you have to do is show your pride pass at the door when you arrive. Um, there will be a guest list for friends and family, but everybody will be required to be fully vaccinated and show proof of vaccination. Everybody is required to wear masks in the theater at all times. Um, but it's very exciting to have like a live audience back in person. It'll be brilliant. It sounds thrilling. So tell me what scene are you both most excited to perform? I think personally, my favorite scene of all is the scene where I meet the witches in the very end and I uh, get my head stuffed in a cauldron. Okay. Very exciting. Okay. Oh, I do enjoy, I've got, a, I've got a bit of a nightmare sequence at the end of the show that's riveting, I would say. <laughs> well, that sounds so exciting. And you know, I need to ask, how would you describe the show in three to five words? Any amount of words. Enthralling enthralling absolutely riveting absolutely riveting so i need to ask just for the hell of it if you guys were to go see a broadway show today what snacks are you bringing <laughs> well, i just have to ask that's a really good question uh i'm kind of one to sneak in food from restaurants so i like to just bring in french fries and some ketchup um well we can't eat in theaters right now because of masks but <laughs> Um, if we could, and I wasn't absolutely terrified of like making like a paper crinkling sound in the middle of the show. I've been in a bit of a Skittles mood recently. Okay. That's okay. the way I'd have to go. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and is there anything, you know, going back to the play, is there anything gory or anything we need to prepare our eyes for? Yes. <laughs> um, yes. Be prepared to see some blood, to see some darkness, um, flashing lights. Um, it's a pretty intense show design wise, but everything looks absolutely stunning. Um, it's, yes, be, be prepared for some gore. It's a story about monsters and about monsterization and encountering the darkness and, and what it means to become a monster yourself. So perfect for Halloween weekend. It really, really <laughs> is. And just for a little bit of insight, when does the show start? We open this Friday. We open this Friday and, mm -hmm. and it will be open all weekend, correct? Yes, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then also Saturday, Sunday, next weekend. Well, amazing. Thank you guys for sitting down with me. It has been a true honor and we cannot wait to see Macbeth starting Friday night. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much. much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you again to Max Coven and the, and the members of the cast of Macbeth. Now, we spoke with Geraldine Hart on the changes she hopes to make as the new head of public safety. Today I had the pleasure of speaking with Geraldine Hart, the new public safety director on campus. We had a chat about what public safety is going to look like in the coming years. Let's take a look at what she had to say. Can you talk a little bit about your background, your career, and what has brought you out here to Hofstra University? I actually joined the FBI in uh, 1996, spent more than 22 years there as an FBI agent, and then I moved to Long Island to take over the Long Island office of the FBI. So when I was there, I worked closely with the Suffolk County Police Department. And after about three or four years, I was selected to be the first woman to lead the 11th largest police department in the country. And moved over there in April of 2018. And in June of 2021, I decided to come over to Hofstra University and become the director of public safety. What is the vision that you have in mind for public safety now? Community engagement is really a priority that I have. I think that um, we can do a lot together with the Hofstra community, both internally with our students and, of course, outside with our neighbors in Uniondale and Hempstead. We really want to work together with all of our students. I want them to see us as just not enforcement, um, that we're there for them, regardless of the uh, incident, that they trust us, that they feel that they can come to us. I think those are really, really important attributes that we're working hard on. Will public safety have an update to their uniforms? Yes. <laughs> it's taken a little bit longer than I wanted, but uh, we are moving, uh, moving very far along on that. So we should have some sort of demo ready in about 30 days or so that I'd like to uh, show the, the campus and uh, make sure that we're, uh, we're all on the same page and then move forward together. I always want to make sure that people know that we're here 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and we'll certainly listen to their concerns. We're in this together. All of us are here to support one another. I really hope that that's the uh, image that we're portraying, and that's certainly the goal that we have here in public safety. As we heard from Director Hart, public safety's new look will include better uniforms and more campus engagement. Thank you for watching. Back to you in studio. Your national news update is coming up after this break.
It's a short ride from your neighborhood to your naturehood. To find a neighborhood park or green space near you, visit discovertheforest.org. Now let's go to your national news update with Amdalada Jasa. Prices are going up at the gas pumps as the country recovers from the COVID-19 pandemic. Experts say the average price has increased by $1.22 per gallon in the last year. These are the highest prices since September of 2014. Consumers are calling on President Biden to combat inflation both at the pump and on a variety of goods such as food. The Biden administration says their options are limited as gas supplies vary. Prices are expected to remain high for another month leading up to the holidays. In other news, an FDA panel is recommending low doses of the Pfizer vaccine for children between the ages of 5 and 11. This is an important step in vaccinating more than 25 million kids in the U.S. The CDC's vaccine advisory group will meet November 2nd and 3rd for the final vote on the recommendation. Health experts believe this move could be a turning point in the fight against the pandemic as young children in schools make up a quarter of the new cases. In Washington, D.C., President Biden met with key Democrats on Sunday to discuss crucial spending and tax provisions. This meeting comes as the party wraps up their expansive social safety net legislation before Biden's appearance at the U.N. Climate Summit next week. Speaker Nancy Pelosi says Democrats are close to completing the bill and display confidence that negotiations over issues like paid leave and Medicare benefits will be finalized by the end of the week. Republicans have been pushing to cut the spending bill from $3.5 trillion to only $2 trillion. The legislation is expected to help families during the pandemic that have been struggling, though details about the plan are still unknown. That's all for your national news update. I'm Omdalata Jasa. Now back to you, Cat and Max. Thank you again, Amdalat. Don't go away. The Hofstra Sports Update is coming up after this. Every day we take steps to keep the people we love safe, but some health risks are easy to miss. Ticks hiding in the yard can spread germs, like the ones that cause Lyme disease. Mice searching for food can spread bacteria that makes us sick. Mosquitoes lay eggs in standing water and can spread West Nile virus and more. Cockroaches are drawn to water in the home, leaving behind allergens that can trigger asthma attacks. Common pests can threaten our health. Learn how to protect your family at pestworld.org. your life. We interviewed the men's and women's soccer teams to talk about how their successful seasons this fall. The men's team was formerly ranked number 19, but are currently ranked number one in the CAA. Hi, I am David Lazar with Hofstra Today, and we are here with the two hottest teams on campus, the men's and women's soccer team. I spoke with the women's soccer team to highlight their 10 shutouts and how they are looking to take their successful season into postseason play. I am here with Simon Ridia, head coach of the women's soccer team. Simon, your team has 10 shutouts on the season. What does that say about your defense? I think it shows the, the effort and individual work that all the team do. Um, you know, we talk about individual defence starting with our front forwards and uh, that starts with Miri Taylor and it works all the way back to our goalkeeper and when you've got a confident goalkeeper behind a good front, front 10, you're going to keep clean sheets. How as a coach do you take this success and manage expectations and make sure that they're not getting too confident ahead of the ultimate goal of CAA postseason play? It depends on the team. Uh, this, this team's quite a veteran team. We've had success in the past. Obviously, you've got to temper the excitement sometimes, but overall, I'm pretty comfortable that this team's ready and, and preparing like a professional team. Thank you so much for your time today. You guys have 10 shutouts this season. What does that say about your team as a whole? I think it just shows that we're really together as a team. Um, everyone's putting in like great work, and the defense has really stepped up this year, and it's really helped Skyler Kuzmich. Um, and I think it comes from leadership within the back. Anya and Fries, they're great and they help control all the people around them. They help Louise, they help Krista. 
and it just really sets the tone by being such great leaders and it helps everyone else in front of, front of them play so well. You've been a part of some successful teams, but what makes this one so special? I think we have a great leadership overall with all our fifth years and they try to show us their way of leadership and so the like lower class men can take on like what they um, show us and how they act as a leader and try to adapt things. So now let's head over to Danny De Crescenzo who's with the men's soccer team. So what's the message you preach to your team above all else week in and week out? I think it's uh, take it game by game. Uh, play to our, to our identity, be who we are, be true to ourselves and, and work hard every single game and enjoy the moment. And what about this group do you just love the most? I love the togetherness, I, know, I love the personalities of the players and the, their ability to adapt, to work hard and to be together as one. What is the best part about competing for Hofstra this year? I mean, I think a big part of it is obviously our success. In my five years, this is the best start we've had and I'm always proud to play for Hofstra, but I mean, when you get the success from all the hard work of the four or five years I've been here, that's probably the best part. So with the regular season almost at its end, what is the team's mindset going into the final stretch? I think right now it's just about taking it game by game. Like, I don't think it's uh, worth it to overcomplicate things and start thinking too many games in the future. Take it one by one, work hard, like follow the process, and we should be good. Once again, I'm Danny DiCrescenzo, and I just got done talking to the Hofstra men's soccer team and their head coach. Back to you in the studio. Thanks again to the Hofstra Pride men and women's soccer teams. But now, David Lazar has the latest in Hofstra sports. On October 30th, the men's soccer team takes on their conference rival, Elon University. The men's team boasts a 13-1-1 record and are currently first in the CAA. The team just moved to 14th in the coaches' poll, one spot away from their best ever ranking. The men look to finish the year with two wins against tough opponents and ride their win streak into the postseason. The women's volleyball team is looking to get out of their drought this weekend. They have back-to-back -back home games against UNCW on Saturday and Sunday, both at 1 p.m. The girls are looking to finish the season on a high note as they enter their final six games of the year. It all starts with these two matches this weekend against their conference rival. The Hofstra women's soccer team looks to end their season with a win as they play home against Charleston on Sunday at noon. The team is currently 25th in the coaches poll as they head into CAA championships. They had a very impressive and encouraging season, but they surely have greater aspirations in their mind as the most important part of their season is right around the corner. Best of luck to the girls and all other Pride teams this weekend. Well, sadly, that will do it for today's episode of Hofstra Today. Tune in to our next episode on November 10th for another incredible installment of Hofstra Today. Also, make sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter to keep up to date on the latest Hofstra news. Signing off, I'm Caitlin Bancroft. And I'm Max Sacco. Have a wonderful Wednesday, stay safe, and have a happy Halloween, Long Island.